Hey guys, my name is Shy, and I just spent, I kid you not, 10 minutes trying to get this tarot mat straight. <laughs> I feel like it's still not straight, but I think we're just going to forge ahead. I'm sorry if it is irritatingly crooked. Um, I'm not even sure what this reading is going to be about, but I was in the shower and I suddenly felt compelled to do it. And I was asking for guidance on what the theme was going to be because I typically feel some kind of theme before reading like an, an initial message coming through. But I kind of just got nothing other than this pressure that I should do this. And then the next song that came on the radio was Don't Fear the Reaper by Blue Oyster Cult. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know. I feel like... <laughs> okay, well, what just fell out was this uh, Knight of Swords. I was going to say, I feel like we're about to pass through a portal and we don't know where it's going. And we're all kind of wondering what's going to be next. A lot like this card, right? We have this person looking down, they're about to leap into this portal. So, I don't know guys. I felt for some reason it appropriate to shuffle on the camera. So I'm going to go ahead and... I guess I'm going to do the Sacred Forms spread, which is actually what this mat itself, all these card pieces, um, all these card placements, do a specific spread. If you've gotten a private reading from me, then you've probably seen me do this. Okay, so right off the bat, we got two queens. The center energy is the Queen of Crystals. This is, <laughs> this feels like Mother Earth to me, right? This is queen of the earth sitting here next to this lion holding the earth in the palm of her hands queen of the earth energy rising and our strengths queen of cups the like the intuitive goddess the em empathic feminine figure our strengths energetic health three of wands manifesting and uh, I just saw 22. 22 is my favorite number, always means that something special is about to happen. I have actually seen like repeating twos many times in my life when everything started to shift, like grounding a manifestation into our reality. I see 222 when I know yes, 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 go in that direction. I see 222 when it's like Finally, all of my inner work is starting to manifest in the external world. And I think most people associate what I just described with 22 to be with threes. Um, <laughs> so a little bit of, a, I guess, a weird disconnect about how I view, how, how I kind of resonate with the number and with how everybody else typically you know, stereotypically at least resonates with the number three. Because that's what I was going to say about this three, three of wands, looking up looking up at the stars. And this particular version of the Three of Wands to me has special meanings for star seeds because we're essentially looking up at our star family, looking up to our star family, you know, wanting to invite them in. And so two, two things going on, I think here. One, with this letter three, letter three, guys, I'm losing it. Number three in our energetic health, this is increasing our manifestation, allowing for growth and change and rapid shifts. I'm sure you guys have all been feeling that. Um, but on another level with the symbolism of this card, this is like calling in ETs. <laughs> I actually read a channeled message a while ago. It was the Ninth Dimension Arcturian Council as channeled by Daniel Scranton. And they were talking about how they are working on like aligning earth with like full open contact with ETs sooner rather than later. And of course they never give us, you know, a timeline really, but sooner rather than later sounds good to me. And I have been deliberately and really consciously working on like releasing my own blocks to meeting ETs face to face. Cause I have, you know, occasionally I have these energetic meetings with them, right? But I've never met one face to face. I have seen a couple of ships, but I want more of that, right? I want more. And I've been working on inviting that in. And I think there's an invitation for us all to be doing that because from what I remember from reading that channeled message was that, you know, all the light ships aren't going to land until earth reach, reaches a certain level of 
readiness for it. And we get ready by inviting them, by inviting them and by releasing our own blocks, our own fears. So, you know, if this is resonating, if you want like more obvious contact with ETs, invite them in, invite them in and ask, you know, your guides and your higher self for, um, you know, help releasing the blocks that are stopping you. And as I say blocks, the next card I'm going to pull is limitations and karma. Okay. <laughs> Hierophant. Interesting. Interesting that this comes out in limitations and blocks. This is, I mean, this is a very positive card, but it has come out in a negative position. So what do we make of that, right? Hierophant. Typically that, you know, spiritual leader, usually masculine spiritual leadership here is represented with this like kind of feminine witchy witchy figure holding this ball of light in the palm of her hand but it's coming up in limitations and karma so to me this actually suggests to me that we have blocks about our spirituality about our spiritual practices and especially about spiritual leadership that we need to release this could go really big and really deep on a lot of levels but I think each and every one of us has certain assumptions or certain habits or just certain routines, like ways of thinking about our spirituality that have kind of become stagnant or codified or maybe even bridging on dogmatic. <laughs> I mean, I know that you guys are some of the most open-minded, like openly spiritual, like non, <laughs> non-traditional, um, most of you non-religious types of people, if you're tuning into this video, right? You're very, very like specific, select, highly resonant group of people for me. <laughs> so I don't think that this is like, you, for you guys, I would say you're probably surprised to hear a message like that because you're thinking like, oh, you know, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't really believe one specific religion, right? I'm really open and to everything. So I think this is asking all of us, you know, me included to really kind of review our practices and the things we believe um, to see if there is anything in our fields, like any things, any th thought patterns or any beliefs that we're holding on to, or even just any habits, right? If, if you ever find yourself thinking that, oh, I need to meditate more, <laughs> or I need to meditate in or every day in order to be more spiritual, it could be something as small as that, but it's actually impactful because any of these things that you feel like you should do, or any of these beliefs that you've inherited from others, even beliefs you've inherited from past lives, um, those might be coming up as something that, that you can release, right? Coming up for release. So this is like to me a reminder that no matter how far we've walked on our paths and no matter how much time attention and energy we've given to releasing our blocks and to cl clearing our chakras and to clearing you know just our light bodies in general and to releasing our like limitations there's always a deeper level and the deeper we go on this the kind of weirder it's going to get <laughs> but I think the ultimate goal here is to get us into a position where there is no other way of existing beyond trusting your own inner guidance at any given moment. So this is like dropping away from any external form of <laughs> information, really. <laughs> Awakening. I was going to put this down here um, in the shadow position. So interesting. I've never seen this card come up in a negative position. I mean, your shadow isn't, you know, the shadow position down here isn't necessarily negative, right? But it's like, what, what needs to be integrated? What part of yourself have you cast out to become your own shadow? What is coming up to be integrated? I think we can see in this. So if you're, if our awakening is coming up to be integrated, this is highly synchronous these two cards coming up in this kind of strange position for them to be in <sighs> this is just it's gonna it's gonna be weird and it's gonna be so different for everybody but there's <laughs> it's funny because for a group of people as already as awakened and as already as open and advanced on your spiritual path as you all are it's weird to tell you that there is an even deeper level of awakening that is that you're almost ignoring. And like everything I say to you guys exactly applies to me as well. I'm receiving these messages for myself. <laughs> um, so that's why it's a little hard for me to articulate this because we're all like in this same pool of energy together. 
Um, it's not like I've gone through this already. I'm going through this exactly with you all together, right? So it's like, I, I, honestly, I don't even know what this is for me, but I can kind of feel it. D you guys can probably feel something about it, some kind of something you're not seeing. And it's not, this. I don't mean this in a negative way, right? It's like there's an opportunity for further depth and further growth and further opening. Something we're not seeing about our spiritual paths and something we need to open ourselves up to on an even deeper level than we already have, uh, which is pretty intense because if you're watching this video, you've already really gone deep. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know how that how that plays out. I guess we'll just, we'll continue and see what else comes out ambitions seven of wands so this is kind of a card of ambition it's a card of kind of having gained the high ground and now wanting to secure our positions wanting to secure our positions the problem with the seven of wands sometimes is that it can indicate a plateau right because this you know this person and this beautiful feline being have climbed the hill they have fought their battles and gotten to the high ground and they're looking down and I always imagine that there's a like something down there just still trying to get them and this person is kind of stuck looking downwards is stuck looking backwards at where they have been stuck looking backwards at the victories they've already had and this so even though this is a, a an energy of culmination and fruition it <laughs> kind of can be a little bit backwards looking and stagnant and a little bit like a plateau like like we're wanting to stay where we are and we're not looking forward so again this is all kind of weaving together in a very interesting kind of way it's like there's an invitation here to move past a certain spiritual or energetic plateau and really catapult ourselves forward so I keep thinking past lives past lives past lives that's what's running through my head um maybe a lot of us are fixating on trying to like read our Akashic records and trying to figure out you know what planets we're from and like what we did in these past lives and all this stuff about our pasts but at a certain level that's I mean it's not even really the past right our past lives aren't even our past lives there are parallel lives our quantum lives right but at some point fixating on all of these other you know past lives is preventing us from looking forward and preventing us from creating it's a little bit of a contractive energy and we want to be I think what what we're being invited to do here is to more just toss all that aside because this all kind of adds up to control structures right hierophant being this kind of masculine spiritual leadership and the seven of wands being this like I got to hold on to what I've won so far that all is not the most flowing growth oriented energy so we want to be like whooshing forward i just i feel like whooshing whooshing we want flowing flowing watery energy moving forward and so the fact that that seven of wands came up in our ambitions to me makes me feel like we're being invited not to focus so much not to focus not to focus on the outcomes of our ambitions right sometimes our this has been a message i've been receiving for myself and i've seen a few other people <laughs> receive the same message is that sometimes fixating on the outcomes of an action pulls us out of alignment like i turned on instagram the other day and it asked me like do you want to hide like like the, the like counter on like your posts and everybody else's posts and i was like hell yeah, <laughs> let's do that. So I turned it off and then I was like scrolling and the fact that I wasn't distracted by the likes on everybody's posts meant I was just looking at what people were sharing. And then when I went to post a post, I didn't have to think about how many people were going to like it. And then when I, after I made a post, I never bothered to go back and find out who liked it, right? So I was just able to just focus on what I was doing, just following my inspiration. So it's like that Focusing, focusing on the outcome of an action pulls can, has the potential to pull us out of alignment. So we should simply focus on how aligned our action feels and move from there. Highest potential spiritual journey, two of wands, putting two and two together, bringing something to light. 
Akashic position, Six of Crystals. To me, this vertical journey here is inviting us to really get creative with the energy we are receiving. This card, this specific Six of Crystals, you know, Six of Pentacles, this person is downloading all of this light, right? They're receiving all of this light through their crown. They're downloading all of these frequencies, codes, you know, all of it. It's all coming down and they're holding on to it and they're going to pass it on, right? So that's what we've been doing. This Akashic position, this bottom card here is something that we have. It, it's like an energy that has been going on inside of us for a very long time. It's a long standing pattern. This card up here is where we should be reaching towards, what we should be leaning into. It's kind of one of our highest potentials or our spiritual journey type of position. This Two of Wands, the first thing I think when I see the Two of Wands is always putting two and two together. It's such a creative energy. Just like I was talking about earlier, I love twos and two, two, two and 22. You know, this is pick up our magic wands and create and create. Do something. I feel like it's like do something with all of this energy we're receiving and if we see it flowing up from six of crystals receiving energy getting ready to pass it on queen of crystals really getting ourselves a strong firm foundation and getting ourselves grounded into mother earth and queen of crystals is always a really grounded leadership energy to me too like really good to see for star seeds especially because you know i mean we all have really damaged lower chakras and we all have trouble grounding and blah 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 so the fact that this queen of crystals is coming up as our center energy ah uh, it's like yes 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 the work you have been doing on your lower chakras the work you have been doing on grounding the work you have been doing on like getting your human life together yes it's all paying off and you're getting yourself set up this is also you know abundance coming in for a lot of people different types of abundance for different people money like finally being finally having enough money finally feeling secure with like a healed root chakra finally feeling safe and secure and good at where you're at i also received this specific queen of crystals from this deck really early on in my awakening and it kept coming up as a as a spiritual card like i was being called to embody this energy and I guess here we are, we're doing it. We're doing it. We're embodying this grounded feminine, this grounded goddess, <laughs> grounded goddess energy. So what do we do now that we're grounding? Now we create, now we bring in this fire energy. Now we put two and two together and create something new, create something brand new that only you can create. That is why we're being called to step out of these outdated patterns. And these aren't even negative patterns, I don't think, but there may be ways of doing things, habits that you have maintained for a long time. For example, you know, if you're a musician, maybe you feel like you need to follow certain rules about musicality, <laughs> um, maybe even rules like keeping time, <laughs> having proper rhythm in your music, maybe even that can be thrown out. I know that, you know, there are lots of different experimental musicians who toss out all kinds of, you know, musical rules, but one that is almost always kept is rhythm, right? So maybe even layers of the rules that you have never considered throwing out, maybe you could just experiment with tossing them out, like throwing out the concept of a steady beat in music. I don't even know what that would sound like, but, <laughs> you know, as an example, throwing out really basic rules um, or, you know, if you're a writer, throwing out the basic rules of spelling and punctuation and grammar. Um, and I know, again, that a lot of experimental writers always do things like that, but find, it's like, f find a rule that has never been broken and break it, <laughs> is this energy. That's how you can break something, or that's how, that's how you can break something, but that's how you can make something entirely new, by breaking something that's never been broken. This is really cool, actually, because I have been... Um, picking up on breakup energy. And for a lot of people, this has been conflict in their relationships. For some people, it has been breakups. For me, I broke up with my rug. Like I had a rug in my living room and I just couldn't stand it anymore. And I had to throw it out. And I was like, yep, I broke up with my rug. So, and I've heard people talking about reality itself breaking up. You know, we're all feeling the dissolution of the control structures that have been that has been kind of keeping our reality together so there's a breakup energy happening on a whole just spectrum of levels and 
how do we make the most of that? We make the most of that by staying grounded throughout the breakup process or the breakdown process or the breakthrough process, right? All of this breaking, this breaking that's happening and then we create something new. It's almost like this person had one magic wand, broke it in half and then made, and then had two magic wands, right? <laughs> Instead of just one. And now they can go off and create twice as much with their two new magic wands. I also received a really weird message uh, yesterday. It was a random YouTube video I clicked on and the reader was talking about how it was for Capricorns. The whole thing was for Capricorns, but I feel like talking about this here. So somehow this is relevant for at least some of you talking about how Capricorns were developing kind of two vortexes of manifestation, just like, <laughs> um, and she herself thought that was a weird message that she was getting. And, but it immediately clicked. I was like, yeah, yeah, two different things going on, two different things. Cause I was starting to feel stagnant just having one creative project going on, like, you know, doing my tarot readings. So I started up a whole entirely separate um, project. I mean, it's not even a creative project. It's just like a separate business project that has nothing to do with any of this. Um, and I was starting to really enjoy it. And I was like, wow, these two entirely separate things are somehow still just as interesting and exciting and as resonant for me. So maybe for a lot of you, two entirely separate things, especially if you are, if you have a small business, right? Or a large business or whatever, if you're, you know, entrepreneurial or if you have a creative project or whatever, and you're thinking, how can I get a additional streams of income? Can I, how can I branch out? How can I do more? Consider the possibilities of things that are entirely different, things you would never have conceived of yourself doing before, something completely out of your area, just entirely different. Because then it's like you can go over here and you do your painting or whatever, and you can go over here and do your rock climbing, <laughs> you know, two entirely separate things that have nothing to do with each other. And yet you might be able to sense the energetic similarities between them. So this is dropping away expectations about what is even possible or normal or feasible for you to do and doing in something entirely new. I don't know why I keep, I hope that hasn't been irritating. I've been clicking my mouth a couple of times. I don't normally do that. I hope I don't normally do that. <laughs> but I have suddenly become really aware of how I've been doing that in this reading. I don't know where that energy is coming. Oh my God. <laughs> so um, that's mantis being energy. That's why I'm doing that. That's mantis. The mantis beings are coming through. I've only connected with them uh, once or twice that I know of, but I think... Perhaps they've been around more times than I've noticed, and I know I've had past lives as a mantis being. I didn't know they were coming through right now until I just clued in right now. So, very interesting. I didn't know that this message was from the mantis beings, or, you know, in co-creation with them. So, some of you are also sensing their energy and not noticing it. Pay attention to weird clicking sounds your mouth makes. <laughs> um, very weird, very interesting. I'm gonna, I'm excited about that. I'm excited. The one time uh, that I had a mantis being show herself to me when I was in meditation, her, she just, her face showed up very close to mine and she was really beautiful in a weird buggy way, right? She was all like blue and turquoise and shiny and what she just kept saying was neutral observation, neutral observation, neutral observation. That was her message to me. <laughs> okay, so that was a weird, that was a weird tangent. Continuing on, emotions and love. Ten of swords. So yeah, breakup energy, right? <laughs> what are you guys leaving behind? What are you leaving behind? Some people are clearly leaving. Oh my god, so the tower just, yeah the tower so massive upheavals in our emotional bodies i don't mind sharing that for like for some of you this is a breakup yes for some of you this could be a massive move um leaving a job having a complete ego death experience for me this was my cat needed an emergency surgery and that was really terrifying because he's 18 years old and 
obviously you d nobody wants to put an 18 year old cat under general anesthesia so I completely didn't handle it well at all I I had like a total meltdown I was convinced that he was gonna die um, but as I speak he's recovering nicely you know he's he's gonna be fine and um, yeah but the fact is that I had this massive massive completely ridiculous in hindsight purge of essentially like fear and trauma and you know frequencies surrounding the fear of death and the fear of losing a loved one and and the fear of suffering I, I felt like I could actually handle the fact you know if he left his body because of course I understand that he would just be going you know back into the higher dimensions and leaving his body and being free and it, it would be good for him right but I, I more I couldn't handle his suffering like before we got him to the vet he was he was in pain and he was suffering and I, I literally just I couldn't handle it like completely lost it so I had a, like this this is what I was going through the tower and the ten of swords it was a total horrible emotional purge but once I got through that and you know my cat came home and he was gonna be fine man I felt like I'd lost 10 pounds of emotional weight <laughs> like I'm feeling so amazing now so light and so free and I really see that the whole experience like my complete overreaction um, because he was never actually you know in danger of leaving his body <laughs> you know he, he was you know he was always had a really high chance of recovering from the surgery and but I just I just couldn't see it I was just obsessed with my fears now I understand that I was purging them so a huge massive massive emotional purge so just some of you have already been through this for some of you it might be coming up in the next few days whenever you watch this this includes people watching this way far in the future just when this happens when you have a massive emotional purge of horrible unpleasant low frequency emotions just know that those things are coming up to to leave they're coming up to leave just try to release them and you will survive and you will definitely feel better afterwards because you will have purged all of that nasty crap that you don't need to be hanging on to anymore so this really intense energy will be serving you you just might not understand that until after the fact but yeah <laughs> okay healing knight of cups after the horrible emotional purge we will be unlocking a greater flow of love this knight of cups to me is a messenger of love right receiving love from others sending love to others love 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 good times all around yeah <laughs> this massive emotional purge will seriously unblock your heart chakra and make way for more healing love to flow through your body and our greatest potential king of swords this is such a beautiful card to me this is the this is the most high frequency depiction of a king of swords i can think of it's hard to see on the camera but it's not just this one person here he's a, he's a trinity he has his shadow selves right here so to me this particular king of swords is about coming into a higher perspective of wholeness literally uniting with other aspects of yourselves reclaiming soul fragments getting glimpses of some of your parallel selves really embodying your higher self and coming into a state of such perspective this king to me has out of all the kings and queens in, in the in the tarot this king of swords has the perspective has the highest perspective he can see everything that's going on this is attaining a level a new level of multi-dimensional perspective so you'll be gaining perspective on that emotional purge you'll be gaining perspective on the limitations like the limiting habits that you've had that have been holding you back and you'll be gaining perspective on what you are creating why you are creating it and even why you are here so coming into like holy a holy level <laughs> of perspective and yeah I don't often use the word holy but it feels so appropriate whenever this card comes out some of you also who resonate with Sananda this is to me this is him coming through because of this masculine Trinity energy okay Oracle card time what other messages are for us 
empathic starseed, energetic sovereignty, absorbing what's not yours. So yeah, I mean, I know you guys are <laughs> probably all doing this all the time and that's gonna have something to do with this emotional purge. It was super weird actually when I when my cat was in surgery, I felt like I could feel what was happening to him. Like when, he, right around the time that he must have fallen asleep, I suddenly got really, really exhausted, really tired and I slipped into a deep kind of weird trance state. I wasn't quite asleep. Um, and then I had all these weird energetic experiences. And then when he was waking up from the anesthetic, um, I felt my consciousness shift and I was like, wow, I mean, I know I, I know that I'm connected to my cats and my dog, but that was something else. I don't know what was going on with that. So some of the shifts you guys are feeling are actually other people's. <laughs> and there's only so much we can do with that. <laughs> um, but that purge will be helping you clear out someone else's energy. Some of you will be very specifically purging an energy that has been implanted into you by someone else, some kind of, some, for some of you, this is even releasing parasites. For some of you, this is releasing ancestral patterns. For some of you, this is releasing like baggage from your past lives. For some of you, it's going to be empathically experiencing some person who's really close to you, experiencing their pain and releasing your, your need to suffer along with them right? Empaths, of course, it's so hard to see someone you love in pain and to not suffer along with them, but suffering along with them doesn't help them, right? What would help them would be you becoming like this king of swords, being able to gain the non-attachment and the perspective to be able to hold a higher frequency, even if someone else is suffering, because you will understand that your higher frequency will help them release their own suffering. <laughs> wow, yeah, I'm sorry. Defenselessness, writing past wrongs, uprooting. So those of you going through breakup energy. There's something about this card that I find hard to articulate. To me, it reminds me of the justice card in the tarot. It is a balancing of energies that have been long out of balance. People finally finding them, like, realizing that they are the same, realizing that they are the same, right? These two beings are both bowing down, apologizing to each other. Um, but look at them, they're, they're the same. They're mirror images of each other. Sometimes the people out to attack you that you feel like are the people attacking you are simply projections, your own projections. I, ha I had, this reminds me of a dream. I'm going to use my dream just as an example to try and clarify what I mean. I had a dream where I was being attacked by negative entities and it, it was, I, I was asleep, but it was a really lucid dream. And I was in my bed in like in my apartment. Right. <laughs> and these beings came in and they were dressed in like those 1920s old clothes. You know, they were like the watchers. They were, they were the watchers. And to me, this was real. Like this actually was happening. And they were, they came in through my door and they were, you know, they were like psychically paralyzing me and I couldn't move. And I was trying to get out of the bed. And, um, Obviously, it was like, you know, it was like psychic warfare going on. Um, I was trying to move and they were trying to paralyze me and I was trying to get rid of them and I was trying to fight them, fight them, fight them. And then I just, something just clicked. I just clued in. I was like, oh my God, you know, I'm sitting here thinking that they are these evil enemies of mine, but really they're, they're me. They're me. They're literally my own projections. They are here because there's some aspect of myself that I have rejected and sent away from me and then this piece of myself is coming back to me to teach me a lesson and I was like what is the lesson I need to learn here what do I need to learn and I was like oh it's not about fighting them it's not about trying to overpower them with my will I was like I just need to shine my light so I just tuned into my in the dream I tuned into my heart space and I just found this like ball of white light that was in my heart chakra and I was like if I just let it out if I just release and I was like it's not about fighting them it's not about trying to save myself it's not about you know anything except shining my light and I just breathed out and just released it and then the whole room lit up in bright white light and then they were gone and I woke up and I was like wow that was a seriously weird intense dream what was going on and I started pulling cards to try and get some you know guidance on it and sure enough the cards that came out was that yeah 
really confirmed my suspicions that those, you know, those negative entities that were attacking me were, they were essentially aspects of myself <laughs> and they were here w from a higher perspective, you know, they were here to teach me a lesson. So from a higher perspective, they were here to serve my highest good and they were here really with best intentions. Of course, you know, on the, on the ego level, yeah, they were coming in to try to and attack me, but like on a higher level, that was to serve my highest good, right? That was literally doing me a favor. And I learned a really important lesson that day. I learned just to let my light out. And that is how I can protect myself in circumstances like that. So yeah, I don't know. That's what comes up with that card for me. So <laughs> I'll just let, I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> oh boy. The golden children, inner child, tenderness, innocence, rare gifts. So that is where we are going, right? Look at this portal to source. That's what I always think about when I see this card. Portal straight to source, straight to the central sun, however you think of it. And we can tune into that energy when we have purged, <laughs> purged our lower frequency emotions, when we have made our peace with the aspects of ourselves that we have rejected, when we have come into balance and harmony, and when we have gained this higher perspective, then the source portal will be open to us. Wow, did I did I say something about a portal at the very beginning of this reading? There's the portal. It's the portal to source. <laughs> if anybody is watching this around August 8th, okay, Lionsgate, that is when you know, infamously the Stargate in the Sirius star system opens up this, the, the portal straight to source opens up. So for some, for a lot of us, this will have, this will play out around Lionsgate, August 8th. And karmic relationships. Yeah. Okay. For all of you going up on through traumatic <laughs> relationship things, you know, <laughs> Yeah, you know, whatever you've been going through in your relationships has definitely been part of your karmic cycle, part of harmonizing energies, part of bringing polarities into balance. You know, this is also on a higher level, on a more galactic level, this is cleaning up the baggage we've all inherited from the Orion star system. In my experience um, of getting to know so many of you on a personal level, doing private readings for you, I know that most, but not all, you know, so if you're the outlier, don't worry about it. But most of you, I'd say like at least 80% of you <laughs> have kind of shared my journey of, you know, living in Lyra, Orion, Sirius, the Pleiades, you know, the whole story that led up to Earth, the very like specific story of our ancient human ancestry that led up, that led up to Earth. Most of you have lived in all of those places and we've all inherited this karmic baggage from Orion. And, but that's fine because all that takes to resolve that is to find unity, to find unity, just like they, just like we did, just like we did in Orion, we helped resolve the intense, insane, extreme polaric environments in Orion. And we brought Orion into unity. And that is what we're doing now. We do that first within ourselves and then we do that second of all in our interpersonal relationships and then we do it in small groups and then it ripples out and out and out until we have become the multi-dimensional human collective that we already are but just aren't experiencing in this specific moment right we have already done this in our futures but on a higher level it is done it is done we are already in unity we just don't know it right now <laughs> so I think I'm going to leave you guys there. Sending you guys so much love and light. I'll see you later. Bye.